moot. Um, that moves on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 12107 in the name of Anna Sarwar on NHS Tayside Public Inquiry. Can I invite quietly, children. Can I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Anna Sarwar to speak to speak to and move the motion. Mr Sarwar, eight minutes, please. Deputy Presiding Officer, that is a relief to hear you're still in a good mood. Um, Presiding Officer, I move the motion in my name. Last week, this Parliament heard about the tragic case of David Ramsey. Uh, David hung himself four days after his second emergency assessment at the Carspew Centre. David's case is sadly not an isolated one. In the past year, there has been a 61% increase in the number of suicides in Dundee. But this isn't about the statistic. It's about people's lives. Many of the families affected us join us in the gallery today. They've been campaigning for an inquiry into mental health services in Tayside for over three years. On Thursday, Richard Leonard raised the case and the demands of the families at First Minister's questions. On Friday, NHS Tayside announced a review into Carsview. The government amendment today goes further with a commitment to a wider inquiry into mental health and suicide prevention services across the region. Deputy Presiding Officer, it shouldn't take raising these issues in this parliament to get action. So I hope this debate means that after their three year struggle, today our parliament can genuinely unite in solidarity with the families campaign. <laughs> Demonstrating to them that we have listened and we have acted. I can't begin to imagine the pain and suffering that they have gone through. So I don't think we can thank them enough for turning that absolute grief into a campaigning effort, an effort to get answers about what happened to their loved ones, but equally an effort to deliver change to stop it happening to anyone else. So to each and every single one of them, thank you. We actually can't thank you enough. Now we on these benches are minded to support the government amendment today, but like the families, we still have questions and need further reassurances and commitments from the government. Crucially, that the independent inquiry will be that a genuinely independent inquiry, that we recognize there are clear trust issues with NHS Tayside, so that we will appoint a genuinely independent chair, that the families themselves will be included in the process of agreeing the terms of reference of the inquiry, that we ensure that the families are part of the process throughout that inquiry and feel included, that the inquiry is open and transparent, and that it includes a public call for evidence. And I must emphasize, it can't just be those things in words, it needs to be visibly independent. It needs to be visibly inclusive. It needs to be visibly open and transparent. And it needs to be visibly supporting those families in those demands. I'm happy to take an intervention from the Cabinet Secretary. Cabinet Secretary. Can I take the opportunity to uh, say to Anna Sauer that uh, yes to all of those questions and I've had the assurance from the Chair of NHS Tayside, John Brown, uh, that that will indeed be the case. Anna I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that. Everyone in this chamber and outside knows that there is at times no love lost between myself and the Cabinet Secretary, but on this I hope we are genuinely at one. And if that is the case, then I thank her for that and I thank her for listening to the voices of the families. And I hope in her own contribution she can set in more detail how those five principles will be delivered in practice so that the families can have that comfort of genuine independence and genuinely part of the process. Because you must learn the lessons of previous inquiries and ensure that those affected are involved in the process. Presiding officer, it would be an absolute tragedy if any inquiry didn't have the full support and confidence of the family, both in terms of its process or indeed its final report. Confidence, that is crucial because we cannot allow this to become a repeat of the MESH inquiry. Now this inquiry has national significance too, as today's report by Professor Rory O'Connor finds 
one in nine young people in Scotland have tried to commit suicide. One in six young people in Scotland at some point in their lives will self-harm. The lessons from this inquiry, if done right, can help to better inform and design services, not just for NHS Tayside, but actually for the whole of Scotland. One in three people will have a mental health issue at some point in their lives. The number of children with recorded mental health problems in our schools has more than doubled between 2012 and 2016. That's why we must see a ring fencing of mental health budgets to ensure resources reach the front line where they're needed most. We need a genuine guarantee of access to a schools-based counsellor for every pupil in Scotland. But an area that I think needs specific investigation in NHS Tayside, but actually right across Scotland, is emergency mental health services. The reality for too many patients is that they can't wait days to see a GP and then wait weeks or maybe months to see a counsellor or a psychologist. We need to build emergency services that could be supported by better use of technology so people can speak to a counsellor and quickly. That can be the difference between life and death for many individuals. Deputy Presiding Officer, I've spoken about uh, the, the wider challenges of mental health, the importance of having the confidence of the families, the importance of having an open and transparent process, the importance of taking the families on a journey, giving them the answers uh, that they want, giving them the answers they need, giving them the closure they deserve, but also delivering for the many, many families in Tayside who are concerned about this situation. But I think it's important to highlight this isn't just an issue in Tayside. I have been struck by the number of families from across Scotland who have said this is about what happens right across Scotland. And I think we've got to make sure we speak for them. But I want to conclude by reading an email I received from the niece of David Ramsey a couple of weeks ago. Because it tells the story of the families in their own words, what they've gone through, what they demand, and why they will not give up until they get what they want. And it does so better than I or any other member in this parliament could ever do in their own words. This email opened my eyes. I struggled to read it because of the raw emotion that it contains. David Ramsey's niece, Julian Murray, wrote, there is no doubt in our mind that David has been failed. My family are now another sad statistic in Dundee. There are so many of us in the same situation. It is terrifying. David was not just my uncle, he was my best friend. So watching him literally lose his mind in front of me with no support from the NHS fuels the anger that I feel he was let down. Carsview Centre passed on any responsibility to myself and family. We tried our best, but it wasn't good enough. I was having to Google how to care for a suicidal individual since Carsview and NHS Tayside took no ownership. It is no wonder I now suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. It is a living hell knowing that I asked the NHS for help. David asked the NHS for help, as well as other members of my family, and we were repeatedly ignored, resulting in David's death. The advice David got was, they had nipped it in the bud, go out and do normal things like walk the dog. The guilt plagues us every day. I ran around Templeton Woods for over two hours, but by the time I got to David, it was too late. David took the advice. He did go and walk the dog. He hung himself with the dog lead. No other family should have to go through the sheer agony knowing that their loved one's death was preventable. David's life has been taken from him. My life has been destroyed in the process as has the rest of my families and other families in Dundee. This crisis cannot continue and will not continue. I will not stop. We cannot grieve. We cannot move on with our lives without some form of justice. You wouldn't expect a murder victim's family to simply move on. So why should our families, whose loved ones have lost their lives, be any different? The answer to Gillian is you shouldn't. So I hope this parliament stands united with you and all the families in your pursuit of justice. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sauber. Can I say very gently, and I do understand why, um, to the public in the gallery that we don't permit applause in the gallery, I do understand why, uh, and I have every sympathy, but it's not permitted. Uh, I now call on Mori Watt, the Minister, to speak to and move Amendment 12107.3. Six minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would like to begin by recognising the strength of those who have raised the cases of their loved one who has been lost to suicide and to thank them for their determination to try and prevent the pain and suffering that they are experiencing being visited on others. I'd like to commend them for coming to the gallery today and be with us, and I look forward to meeting them soon. It is their efforts that have led the new leadership team of NHS Tayside to set out that they will commission an independent inquiry. I commend Anna Sarwar for his very removing remarks. And as he said on Friday, John Brown and Malcolm Wright, the chair and chief executive of NHS Tayside, announced the inquiry into mental health services at Carthew Centre. They have since broadened it to cover mental health services across Tayside. Miles Briggs' amendment today sets out that the inquiry should cover the whole region and that the families that have been infect, affected must be involved in the establishment and remit of the inquiry. I agree, and as such, we will support this amendment, as we will Anna Sarwar's. As we know, mental health services do not operate in a vacuum. Their quantity and benefit are dependent on meaningful and coherent links between community, specialist and crisis services. I support the commitment made by NHS Tayside to ensure that the findings and recommendations of the recent reports by the Mental Welfare Commission and Healthcare Improvement Scotland are fully considered through the inquiry. And I'm also pleased to see the commitment to work with staff and to hear from patients and families. It is vital that their voices are clearly heard and responded to. I am confident that the newly appointed chair and chief Chief Executive of NHS Tayside will together create the environment for an effective and independent inquiry. This will allow the inquiry to be established and undertake its work quickly and ensure any necessary changes are expedited. However, should it be apparent that the inquiry is not independent or that barriers to its work exist, the Health Secretary will use the statutory powers available to her to make this happen. So, as the Cabinet Secretary said, it's yes to all Anna Sarwar's asks. Within the recent debate around mental health services, there has been a specific focus on the tragedy of those who have died or attempted to die through suicide. We are currently working with people and organisations from across Scotland to conclude a new suicide prevention plan. The new plan will be published soon in the summer. Progress has been made in the last decade with a 17% reduction in deaths from suicide. But I want us to go further. My view is clear. Suicide is preventable. We need our services to work more closely with each other so that the support to those in crisis is coherent and effective. That is not only important for those who are in contact with health services, but also for developing new approaches to reaching those who are, considered, who are considering suicide but are not in contact with any service. Currently, around a quarter of deaths from suicide are carried out by those who have not been in contact with health services. As part of the suicide prevention plan work, I want to see a national suicide prevention leadership group established to drive the changes required. The plan will also support the development of appropriate reviews into every death from suicide. I want a process where necessary involving multidisciplinary reviews, which ensures that learning and knowledge from every suicide is shared, considered and improvements made. This Parliament has already legislated for a review of the arrangement for reviewing deaths of people receiving mental health treatment through Section 37 of the Mental Health Scotland Act 2015. That will report in December this year. I want to ensure that development of a process to review all deaths by suicide takes account of the recommendation 
of the Section 37 review, helping drive local and national learning. I also want a more consistent and coherent approach to supporting those who have lost a loved one through suicide or who are themselves at risk of dying from suicide. Bereaved relatives and friends have told me of the improved support they require when they are involved in a review. I note that the Samaritans have welcomed the proposals in our amendment and we will continue to work with them on this and other issues that they, they highlight, not least on isolation and loneliness. Presiding officer, we all know that there is rarely any single identifiable causal factor related to individual deaths by suicide. But through sharing knowledge and learning, ensuring services and support are effective and joined up, and that all those at risk of taking their life through suicide get the help they require, we will de deliver the changes required. The independent inquiry in Tayside will be an important part of this learning and improvement of services. I move the amendment in Shona Robinson's name. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call on Miles Briggs to speak to move amendment 12107.2. Mr Briggs, five minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I grew up in Perthshire, and I know many individuals and families who have experience of NHS Tayside's mental health services. In the majority of cases, they have received help, support and treatment, which helped them to get their lives back on track. However, I also know of cases and individuals where they've been failed, and questions remain over what has gone wrong. NHS staff in Tayside work hard to deliver the best mental health services they can under huge resource and patient demands. Today I want to start by paying tribute to the families who have joined us today in the public gallery and all those who have spoken out. It cannot be easy for them as they seek the answers they so desperately need as to how their loved ones have not been given the care and support that we all expect our NHS to provide. Deputy Presiding Officer, I also think it's right to condemn the personal attacks which campaigners have faced, mainly on social media, simply for speaking out. And I have to say, this has been shocking to witness. But I want to particularly pay tribute to Gillian Murray and the Lost Souls group for the campaign that they have undertaken to seek the answers families in Tayside so desperately need. When NHS Tayside announced last Friday a limited inquiry into Carsview and Dundee, I said then that it was clear that this is not acceptable to families across Tayside, and I made the view, that view known to the Scottish Government. It's clear from the many families across NHS Tayside that there remain many unanswered questions. And from the outset, it's been clear that a wider, independent inquiry across the region was indeed needed to find out what has gone wrong in so many cases at a number of facilities across the region. And, it's truly go and this has to truly go to address the problems and get answers and make sure that we stop these mistakes from ever happening again in the future. And I know from my colleagues who represent Mid-Scotland, Fife and the North East regions in this parliament that they have individual families and cases where mental health services have failed. And in some cases, suicides have taken place within NHS facilities when individuals have meant to be under the safety, care and supervision of NHS Tayside. From the outset, Scottish Conservatives have focused our attention on supporting the families and making sure that their voice is heard. That is what my amendment seeks to achieve in securing a wider independent inquiry across NHS Tayside, one which would allow for these concerns to be investigated comprehensively in order to restore faith in these services among patients and their relatives and friends. The prevalence of suicide in Scotland, especially amongst men, should focus all our minds. Deputy Presiding Officer, as has already been said, it's my belief that there will be learnings from other parts, learnings for other parts of our health service from this inquiry's findings. Lessons that must be learnt and services that must be improved. No more individuals should face crisis and then not be denied help. And I would like to say this to the Cabinet Secretary, that it's imperative that families seeking answers are really included in the establishment and remit of the wider inquiry. And I'd like to endorse Anna Sauer's points on the five principles of this inquiry. Presiding officer, we know that we face a crisis in our mental health services across Scotland. The cases which have come to light in NHS Tayside have demonstrated that in the most concerning of ways. Those who have campaigned to make today happen and for this parliament to listen should be really valued for what they have done to open this up to the rest of our country. But above all, today cannot be about shutting down these concerns, it must be about opening them up. 
That is what I've sought to del deliver today. That is what I hope our Parliament will deliver. And I move the amendment in my name. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Briggs. I now call Alison Johnson. Four minutes, please, Ms Johnson. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. The most serious matters bring us to the Chamber today. In Scotland, we've made new commitments to see that people are treated with dignity and respect when they need help from our social security system. And these principles apply to healthcare too. I know that our healthcare system relies on the skill, the professionalism and the compassion of doctors, nurses, pharmacists and all other healthcare professionals every day. Yet there are times when people, vulnerable people, reach out for help and do not get it. That should never happen. We talk easily, at times, too easily, about parity of esteem between mental health and physical health. But we know that that is far away from reality. And I too give my sincere condolences to David Ramsey's family. This parliament must work together to ensure that every lesson is learned and that we begin to treat mental health with the urgency it requires. It's right that NHS Tayside has commissioned an independent inquiry into mental health and suicide prevention services, but I join others in stressing that any inquiry must be truly independent. It must involve families from the very start to the very finish, and it must be prepared to go wherever necessary. It wouldn't be right for me or indeed any of us to, to prejudge what the remit of the inquiry should be. Families must help guide those decisions. But in considering the government's amendment, I reviewed the recommendations from Health Improvement Scotland and the Mental Welfare Commission. And I was struck that there is a high turnover of locum psychiatrists in NHS Tayside. That can't be good for continuity of treatment. It can't be good for sharing information about support and treatment. It can't be good for building relationships with patients. And it can't be good for building good relationships between staff. And I note too that there were also long waiting times to see a clinical psychologist. And I'd be grateful if the minister could, in closing, discuss what steps the government has taken to support recruitment and retention of psychiatrists and clinical psychologists in Tayside. We're all concerned that out with acute services, people are waiting far too long to access psychological therapies in Tayside. Only 54.7% of people started treatment within 18 weeks of referral, and only 41.5% of children and young people were seen by CAMS within 18 weeks of referral. Those figures are shameful. So it's clear to me that as well as investigating specific failings at Carsview, we must make sure that community services are well supported and that people have access to psychological therapies when and where they need them. Healthcare Improvement Scotland review also indicated that the crisis resolution and home treatment team haven't always been able to work well with community mental health teams in different localities. That is very concerning. If there are systemic or organisational issues at work, they must be addressed now. I'd like to briefly dis to discuss the actions on suicide prevention addressed in the government's amendment, which include creating a suicide prevention leadership group and multi-agency reviews into all deaths by suicide. Uh, these steps are necessary. They're welcomed by Samaritans Scotland and, and I thank them for their expert briefing today. Presiding officer, like colleagues, um, I agree that any inquiry must be as wide in scope as necessary and absolutely must begin and end with family involvement. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Alec Cole Hamilton. Mr Cole Hamilton, four minutes, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by echoing thanks to Anas Sarwar and the Labour Party for using their time to bring this debate to Parliament this afternoon and for the very measured tone, I think, which they struck at the, at the top of the debate, which has been picked up by other speakers thus far. This is not a debate about personalities, either in government or on opposition benches in this chamber. It is a debate that is very much steeped in human tragedy. And I want to thank David's family and the other campaigners from the Lost Souls group who are here with us today for their courage in bringing this issue to Parliament, but also in being here to support us in our deliberation of it uh, this afternoon. It says a lot about the state of our public policy response to suicide in this country that we need campaigns like the Lost Souls Group and that indeed that this debate does come in opposition time. Self-harm, suicide ideation and indeed suicide completion represent the very nexus of human crisis, the very limit of endurance that all too many lives in Dundee and in regions beyond it where that crisis is met all too often 
with silence and a void in service provision or, or gaps in service provision. Last week, I, I want to pay tribute to uh, Richard Leonard for his first minister's question last week. It was uh, one of those pin drop moments where I think every single member of this chamber couldn't help but feel huge compassion for David Ramsey and for his family. That at the age of 50, he very sadly joined the ranks of all too many young men in this country for whom suicide is the leading cause of death. And I wish to associate myself and the Liberal Democrat benches, both with Anas's call for those five tests to be met by that independent review into what happened in NHS Tayside. And I very much welcome the Cabinet Secretary's positive response to that. And on that basis, we will uh, assure her of our uh, support for the government amendment tonight. Because confidence is absolutely key, not just to the families represented here, but to everybody in the, the Tayside area, in terms of the transparency that that review will need if it is to enjoy the, the confidence and reassurance that it can give to the families affected by suicide in that area. So the independence is critical, the, independent, the, the public call for evidence is critical, hearing the stories and lived experiences of those families steeped in tragedy themselves will be vital to, to learning and ensuring that, that there can be progress made in, in this critical area. But what happened in Dundee and in Tayside is, is actually symptomatic of a, a wider problem, wider deficiencies in our public policy response to suicide as a country. Yes, suicide as a trend has been going down across this country. That is something for which we should all be justifiably proud. But we are seeing an uptick in its resurgence again with an 8% rise last year alone. Now, I have mentioned many times the concerns that these benches have about the 18-month delay in the suicide prevention strategy and the fact that, that it has been met with some derision from the sector. Now, it has been published in draft from the Samaritans who talked to the fact it lacks resources, timescales, ambition. And in fact, Sam H, who were delivering suicide prevention training in this parliament just this very week, who said that without an understanding of what's going to be in the plan, they can't plan for events like this or training events that they held without knowing the government policy response to which they uh, should underpin. But I want to close by thanking again uh, the Lost Souls group and in particularly David's family for having the courage to, to come to us today, to be part of this debate. Because if anything can come from that abject human tragedy, then let that legacy be positive action and concerted consensus across the benches in this chamber to ensure that David leaves a lasting legacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now move to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes. I call Jenny Mara to be followed by Ashton. And please, Ms Mara. Presiding officer, mental health is a human crisis in the city of Dundee. For years now, I have listened to families concerned about the support and treatment their loved ones receive. The times I find difficult to find words for are the parents who come to me having lost their children, asking why they had been turned away from Carsview, asking why their sons had not been admitted, asking why they could not make contact with any services that weekend. Words seem futile as grief overwhelms the room. There is no doubt in my mind that we have a particular problem with the services in Carsview. This was confirmed in no uncertain terms when I visited the Carsview Centre in September 2016 after calling publicly for a full review of the Carsview unit. The presentation I received was possibly one of the most defensive accounts of public services I have ever heard. After meetings with the then chairman of NHS Tayside raising public concerns about mental health, I asked the new chair and chief executive at a meeting with them on their first day of work 9th of April this year, to please prioritise two issues for our community, mental health provision and deaths from drugs. Like the Cabinet Secretary and our health spokesperson, Anas Sarwar, I am therefore relieved that new management have undertaken to review Carsview and mental health services at last. I am also heartened that the government amendment today agrees with Labour's call that a public inquiry is appropriate if we do not seem to be getting the answers we need. We will hold them to this if necessary. I have raised these issues time and time again with NHS Tayside, and if I feel powerless, I can only imagine how powerless the families feel 
and how the lack of answers or redress compounds their loss and their grief. I am grateful to Richard Leonard for elevating this call to the level where it is heard and answered. But of course, presiding officer, services are wider and should be wider than Cars View. NHS Tayside's recent mental health review resulted in the closure of the Mulberry unit in Angus and consequently further pressure on Cars View. The reasons MSPs were given at the time of the closure of the Mulberry unit was that there were not sufficient numbers of psychiatrists to staff the unit safely. No politician can turn their face to this advice. But the reason we got to this place, I believe, is poor workforce planning by the Cabinet Secretary's team. We have a growing crisis, but declining capacity and services ever further from communities and people. Increasing problems with mental health is not unique to Scotland. Other post-industrial countries report the same. And that is why I believe, as well as now conducting a full review of health services that are available to support people, the government has a moral duty to look closely at prevention. Following a meeting with the Lost Souls Parents Group in Dundee a couple of years back, I met with the Head of Mental Health at NHS Tayside and her team at Murray Royal. After discussing the services that the families had received, I asked how we could prevent escalating problems and crisis. Resilience in children was the answer. I believe we have a duty to start looking at this seriously. Early intervention in mental health is so poor in Dundee. Only 40% of children on the CAMS waiting list in NHS Tayside are being seen within 18 weeks. Sam H have recently commissioned a survey to find out how many children are being turned away from CAMS after being referred by their GP. I have raised the issue of declining numbers of educational psychologists in this chamber on a number of occasions and I do believe that changes that the government has made to the path and the cost of training is depleting this essential workforce further. Presiding officer, I welcome the review and the commitment by the government to look again if we do not get the answers we need, but this is not job done. There is a huge and escalating problem with mental health from childhood and we need to think about ways of tackling this as early as possible. I call Ash Denham to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Suicide prevention is such a serious subject that I am glad that we have chamber time today to discuss it. And I think there are a number of things in the Labour motion that I do agree with. Namely, that if people are having trouble accessing services, that that does need to be addressed and that people should never be afraid to call out failings in service and then try to get them fixed. In any sphere, be it something like international development, be it a large corporation or a health board, all of those areas demand continuous learning in order to improve. We all need to be able to learn from a variety of situations in order to move forward. And an important part of any system is constructive challenge. If people do have the courage to come forward, they need to be listened to, and then the feedback that they give needs to be acted upon. So I welcome the fact that the new NHS Tayside chairman, John Brown, has commissioned an independent inquiry into the mental health services delivered both at Carsview and now also the entire region. This inquiry will speak to the families who have experience of the centre and also review the recommendations that have already been set out in reports both by Healthcare Improvement Scotland and the Mental Welfare Commission. And if it is found that things need to change, then that change should be undertaken as a priority. Continuous improvement is what we should all be striving for. I was encouraged to see that the government have been consulting on a suicide prevention action plan with the goal of producing an ambitious strategy informed by the views both of families with experience of suicide and also the frontline services that work in that area. The consultation, I'm informed, has received 280 responses and I look forward to seeing the consultation responses feed into the finalised action plan. Part of the plan is the development of a world-leading suicide prevention plan for employers and I think this is both ambitious but I also think it should be achievable. And I know that here in Parliament, they have just run a training session for staff 
on the subject of mental health and suicide prevention. My own staff from my office attended, and I think this type of thing is useful in itself, but I think it also has a potentially more important effect than that, that it sends out a wider message that this is something that we care about, that there shouldn't be stigma around talking about either mental health or suicide, and that support is available for those needing it if required. The new action plan is key, but more than that, we need to make sure that the implementation does justice to the plan. And so that is why the government setting up the forum of stakeholders to track the real progress on real actions in the real world is both welcome and also provides a vital oversight. I don't think any government can ever get everything right, but I do believe the Scottish government is committed to doing more and to doing better on both mental health and suicide prevention. And for me, this was particularly signalled clearly by the appointment by the First Minister of Scotland's first mental health minister. If those who have experience of this can inform the government's approach, I have every faith that we will begin to make improvements. And I'll conclude today with a quote from Letters of Gratitude from this year. Just in case your mind is playing tricks on you today, you matter. You are important. You are loved. And your presence on this earth makes a difference whether you see it or not. I call Liz Smith to be followed by Claire Hawkey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I think the tone uh, of the preceding six speeches speaks volumes about why this debate is taking place and the importance of it. And I'd like to pay tribute to all the previous speakers. Let me start by adding my welcome to the very genuine commitment to an independent review and agree with the comments made by others that it is vitally important that we take with us the families of the patients who feel that they've had a raw deal or who feel that they have been so badly let down and not listened to. Because if we don't do that, Deputy Presiding Officer, we will not make any progress at all. The Mental Health Welfare Commission has stated that it is every patient's right, indeed every family's right, to expect the highest standards of care when someone is in a very vulnerable situation. Exactly the same expectation that should be evident in any part of the health service. And it's in that context that I come to this debate from my own constituency work across three parliamentary sessions in this place. In several cases, I'm sorry to say, when there has been a, it's been very clear that patients did not receive the highest standard of care. And whilst I obviously cannot speak about these individuals concerned because of the need to maintain confidentiality, I want to highlight three areas where I think reform is needed and which, as it happens, tie in with the findings of the Mental Health Welfare Commission's report. As Alison Johnson and Jenny Mara have rightly said, there are staffing issues. And we know across Tayside just now that there are significant pressures on staff, with the result that there are currently 21 locums in place, with the additional expense that that brings, but more importantly, with the difficulties of patients not having a consistent link to member of staff who can deal with their specific problems. That ends up in them having to retell their story several times over, something which obviously adds to the stress of the situation. Related to this is the issue about care plans and the lack of consistency. The Mental Health Welfare Commission reported that there was very variable information within patients' care plans. While some were described as excellent, one patient told them about having to fill in forms themselves with no assistance from any member of staff because they were too busy doing other things. That was certainly the experience of two of my constituents whose care was very patchy in terms of its quality. So I think that the recommendations made by the Commission in this respect are extremely important and will hopefully provide some essential support to patients and their families at their most vulnerable time. Like so many other professions, mental health care can bring with it a great deal of time-consuming paperwork, which often prevents the carers from spending time with their patients. And that's just another reason to hasten the improvements in the electronic record system. I think we all understand the desire to help patients at home and in the community as far as possible. But for the 6% who require hospital treatment, we need to ensure that there are better standards of care across the board. 
But we also need to understand that there is much more work to do to improve the situation when there are crisis, ad, crisis administrations. And I do hope that the independent commission brought in to review matters will ensure that there is a greater liaison with the police, who are almost always in the front line of such cases. The recent Samaritans report, which says that suicide is not being treated seriously, could hardly be a more stark warning for us all. Presiding officer, may I finish on one final issue? And that's reference to the conflicting requests from health and social work. And it comes to mental health management. And again, I think it's relevant to the problems within the structures of IGBs, which I spoke about in last week's debate about NHS Tayside. It was an issue that was discussed yesterday between MSPs and John Brown and Malcolm Wright. And I do hope we can address this matter soon. Good quality mental health care depends upon clear lines of responsibility and accountability for staff and for patients and families knowing exactly what these are. There is, Deputy Presiding Officer, no time to waste at all. And I support, obviously, the motion, the other amendments, and the amendment in the name of Miles Briggs. I call Claire Hockey to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I start today's speech by referring members to my entry in the Register of Interests in that I'm a registered mental health nurse and currently hold an honorary contract with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. There can be no denying that the death of David Ramsey and others in NHS Tayside is anything but a tragedy. I will repeat the phrase that has been said today already, however, it does not diminish its veracity. One suicide is one too many. And I wish to extend my own heartfelt sympathies to Mr Ramsey's family and friends. And to the lost souls of Dundee campaigners, I pay tribute to their tenacity in ensuring that their campaign is rightly being debated in the Scottish Parliament here today. As a mental health nurse of over 30 years, I know all too well of the effects someone's suicide can have on their loved ones. And therefore, I sincerely hope the families present here today are able to find <coughs> some comfort in the months ahead. Presiding officer, I've raised the issue of suicide and in particular male suicide on a number of occasions in this parliament. In the same year as Mr Ramsay's passing, another 700 and 27 suicides were registered in Scotland, 71% of which were men. Although the suicide rate in Scotland has fallen by 17% over the last decade and the five-year rolling average shows a downward trend, this is little comfort to those whose family member or friend has already passed away. However, we owe it to them and the others to continue working to ensure that the number of people taking their lives continues to follow. Presiding officer, suicide is not unique to Tayside. Sadly, 44 people took their lives in South Lanarkshire in 2016, a number of whom will have been from my own constituency. However, if his NHS Tayside has been letting down its patients, then it is correct that it is closely looked into. And I therefore welcome the announcement that an independent inquiry into mental health and suicide prevention services across the region has been launched. It is testament to the decisiveness of the new leadership which was installed by the Cabinet Secretary and I am sure that the Health Board will move in the correct direction under the leadership of John Brown and Malcolm Wright. Within this investigation, the delivery of services at centres like Carsview will be closely examined and should the report highlight areas for improvement or raise issues where lessons can be learned, then NHS Tayside must make the necessary changes immediately. I sincerely hope for the families who are concerned about mental health and suicide prevention services in NHS Tayside that they will not be let down by this process. However, if they are, they can be reassured the Scottish Government will convert it into an inquiry under the auspices of the Inquiries Act. The families will be anxiously awaiting the conclusions of the NHS Tayside's investigation and I hope time is given to ensure all relevant details are thoroughly scrutinised. I was heartened by the Cabinet Secretary's comments today on Good Morning Scotland that the families are to be at the heart of this inquiry, being involved with its terms of reference and that they should have confidence in its chair. Presiding officer, whilst this investigation is underway, I do feel it worthwhile to point out that Scottish Government and health agencies have already been looking into concerns regarding mental health services in NHS Tayside. 
The Mental Welfare Commission for Scotland carried out an unannounced inspection of Carsview in November and made a number of recommendations uh, regarding their care planning, the availability of responsible medical officers, and whilst Health Improvement Scotland carried out a similar examination in December 2017. Of course, more widely, Scottish Government have published a 10-year mental health strategy and the new Suicide Prevention Action Plan will be published soon. I'm incredibly proud that as a mental health nurse, governments, politicians, health services and the public are beginning to see mental health as being equal to that of physical health. However, we are not there yet and we must all continue to work together until tragic deaths like that of Mr Ramsey are a thing of the past. Paul Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Bill Bowman. Thank you very much. Uh, everyone, I think, has acknowledged that we are having this debate today because of failures in the provision of mental health services to the people of Dundee and Angus and Perth and Kinross. Those failures are to be the subject of the independent inquiry announced last week, and it is essential that the terms of reference of this inquiry are broadly drawn and that those affected by those failures have a say in the process from the outset. So the five principles laid out by Anna Sarwar today and the Cabinet Secretary's positive response to them are very welcome. The last review of mental health services in Tayside led to decisions to cease to provide general adult psychiatry in either Perth or Angus. And those decisions and the process of reaching them must be looked at again as part of this inquiry. The board's view then was that their existing model for delivery of acute admission inpatient services was not sustainable and could pose a significant clinical risk to patients and staff. Their answer, as Jenny Mara said, was to close the Mulberry unit at Stracathro and to deliver those services only at the Carsview Centre in Dundee. We need to see reconsideration of whether that was the right answer, and if not, what else must be done to deliver safe and sustainable services. We have already heard some of the concerns around Carsview, so I'm glad the remit of the inquiry will now go beyond that unit to look at mental health services across Tayside as a whole. Patients from neighbouring board areas may also be affected because some specialised mental health services are planned and delivered on a regional basis. Other boards are also involved, of course, with the chair of NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and the chief executive of NHS Grampian taking on equivalent roles for the time being in NHS Tayside. And while John Brown and Malcolm Wright certainly bring fresh pairs of eyes of their own to the problems in front of them, they also acknowledge that for the planned inquiry to be credible, the appointment of a genuinely independent chair and advisors will be crucial. And I welcome their plans to engage with the Mental Welfare Commission and others in seeking to identify the best people. And I look forward to hearing who will lead uh, that inquiry, I hope, uh, in the course of this week. The inquiry must also provide a platform for those most directly affected to have their voices heard. Uh, I, I join the tributes to those people who have attended uh, this evening, I know that pa pa patients and families don't just want to hear the answers, they want and need to be part of framing the questions. One constituent contacted me yesterday evening and put it succinctly. I would like to know, he said, if I and the rest of the general public will be given the opportunity to provide evidence of the failures I have experienced through supporting friends who have been admitted. And if past and existing patients will also be given the opportunity to provide evidence. We know since Grenfell that the public demand to be part of the process, not simply to be its victims or its beneficiaries, and that principle must apply here too. I hope one result of the inquiry will be to put in place clear clinical leadership and effective management of mental health services. Achieving that clarity can help deliver the best possible mental health services in Tayside, including in particular the best hope of reducing the incidence of suicide. The Health and Sport Committee has agreed to take evidence on the government's suicide prevention strategy before the summer recess. The evidence we take can influence the final form of that strategy if ministers are, are open to that evidence having that effect. And while the timescale is necessarily different, the independent inquiry in Tayside also has the potential to influence national policy on suicide prevention. If lessons can be learned from the experiences of affected families in recent months, then perhaps some other families will be spared that pain. That is why those affected must be front and centre of this inquiry 
and I look forward to NHS Tayside and ministers laying out exactly how that will be achieved. The last of the open debate contributions is from Bill Bowman. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I suspect my remarks will duplicate what others have said, but the subject today is such that I don't think any apologies are necessary for, for that. Suicide is pre preventable. Last week we heard Richard Leonard highlight the case of David Ramsey, who took his own life after being turned away from the Carthew Centre, a tragic case that speaks to a wider problem in Dundee, Dundee and Tayside. The campaign group Lost Souls of Dundee has identified at least 10 such cases that could have been prevented if better care had been available at Cars View. Just one week on from Mr. Ramsey's case being highlighted, we now have an NHS Tayside inquiry moving forward for which the Health Secretary has signalled her support. I'm pleased to see that swift response and I welcome any move to provide answers and prevent further deaths. Those answers must now be sought and lessons learned. But I note the words of Gillian Murray, who is part of the Lost Souls group and David Ramsey's niece concerning the inquiry. She said, I'm pleased at this announcement, but it is not the end. This is just the first step. I couldn't agree more because research shows that 70% of people who take their own lives do, within, do so within a year of having contact with healthcare services. Thus, the proposal to look only at cars few alone was never sufficient to provide the answers needed. We must ensure the inquiry covers all mental health needs, resources, and provision at NHS Tayside. I was reminded of the importance of that yesterday when I was contacted by a constituent out with Tayside who raised some very serious concerns about mental health care at NHS Grampian. It was a timely reminder that failings in mental health care are not confined to a particular treatment facility or for that matter, a particular health board. For NHS Tayside in particular though, a wide ranging inquiry is vital because it can offer more reassurance to patients and their families that the issue is being taken seriously and let us be clear how serious an issue this is. Around two people die by suicide in Scotland every day. In Dundee alone, we've heard the rise of 61% in the recent um, suicide rate. Almost unbelievably, almost two out of every three Scots have some experience of suicide. A worrying statement that I'm sure the ministers opposite will pay heed to. It also reflects a concern that locally in Tayside, there is a lack of focus on improving mental health outcomes. For example, as I think we've heard, less than half of Tayside children waiting for mental health treatment are seen within 18 weeks. The target is 90% to be seen within this time frame, whereas NHS's performance at about 42% was the second worst in Scotland. But the list goes on. Staff facing difficulties in accessing training, a lack of permanent psychiatrists with patients seeing up to four different consultants during their time in hospital, waiting times for clinical psychologists exceeding the 18-week target, and I think, as we also heard, even one patient being given a blank recovery care plan form to fill in themselves. Treatment is crucial, of course, but we must equally be prepared to tackle the underlying reasons why so many people take their own lives. For example, those living in the most deprived areas are, often, are, are more than three times as likely to die by suicide than those in the least deprived areas. That is a particular challenge in Dundee, which is amongst the highest levels of deprivation in Scotland. We must stop simply offering apologies and platitudes and getting work to make sure no more individuals and families suffer. Let us never forget, talk may be cheap, but lives must be held dear. Thank you. We now move to the closing speeches and I call Annie Wells for around four minutes, please, Ms. Wells. Officer, <clears throat> and I too wish to echo Liz Smith's comments regarding the tone of the debate today. I think it's been a debate where <clears throat> we have been able to be open and frank and honest and also let people know that we are taking mental health and suicide seriously within this parliament. And I wish to pay tribute to the families here in the public gallery and also to the hardworking staff who work tirelessly with difficult circumstances. With mental health services having fallen seriously short of standards expected in NHS Tayside, I welcome the comments from the Minister 
stating that the strategy, the investigation will cover the whole of Tayside, Tayside and all facilities. As we saw with the extremely tragic case of David Ramsey, it's families and friends that live forever with the consequences of the services that failed their loved ones. NHS Tayside has come under the media spotlight for very good reason. As Bill Bowman spoke about as an MSP for the area, less than half of Tayside's children are waiting for mental health treatment were seen within 18 weeks. And the NHS Tayside performance of 41.5% was the second worst in Scotland. And as Anna Sarwar and others have stated, suicides in Dundee have risen 61% in a year. And I think along with others in the chamber today, I too would like to pay tribute to the bravery and work of lost souls of Dundee. And they have identified that at least 10 suicides could have been prevented had better help been available at Carsview. Four minutes is of course very short for such an important topic. But I want to round off the debate for the Scottish Conservatives by looking at how NHS Tayside sits within the broader context of mental health services, struggling to meet growing demand. Across Scotland, we know that they are being pushed to their limit with over a quarter of adults waiting too long for psychological therapy and more than a quarter of children are waiting too long for mental health treatment. With the publication of the Scottish Government's mental health strategy last year, we haven't seen the step change as promised. Mental health charities have publicly stated that it lacks the ambition and investment needed. And we have seen with NHS Tayside that the current model isn't working. And when it comes to suicide, a topic that is incredibly sensitive, I'm concerned we're not seeing the ambition that is so desperately needed. 728 people died from suicide in Scotland in 2016 a rise of 8% from the previous year. And despite this, we haven't had a suicide action plan in place since 2016. The draft plan published in March was met with open disappointment from Samaritan Scotland, who had engaged with the Scottish Government prior to its publication, citing its scarce detail on targets, timeframes, and what resources will be allocated. There was also no information on how those disproportionately affected by suicide will be supported. For example, men, those in middle age, those in deprivation, and those living alone. With a worryingly lack of detail so far, I hope that the final strategy that will be published in the summer will clearly outline how suicide will be tackled. And to finish today, I would like to again echo comments my colleagues calls for a wider inquiry into mental health services and NHS Tayside. With Mental Health Awareness Week beginning on Monday, it is time that strong words on this subject are backed up by urgent action. If we do not act now, then mental health will continue to lag behind physical health when it comes to investment and resources with potentially far-reaching consequences. The problems in NHS Tayside have vividly highlighted that they we are not disciplined in tackling mental health issues, then we badly let the families down and friends of those with mental health problems. We would be failing in our duty across this chamber if we did not do everything in our power to improve the situation for some of the most vulnerable in our society. Thank you. Uh, call Shona Robson. Um, around four minutes, please. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, can I join with others in uh, welcoming the families to the gallery and thanking them for getting us to this point? NHS Tayside, the new leadership team there, have listened. They've come in with a, a fresh pair of eyes, I think, and have listened and heard the calls from the families and have responded. I think appropriately in the announcement that the chair made on Friday and of course as others have pointed out the um, the inquiry and the nature of the inquiry um, it would have been wrong to have focused that purely on Cars view it's quite right and proper that the inquiry looks across the whole of Tayside and as others have also said that any lessons for improvements of mental health services in Tayside may well have application elsewhere in Scotland and that again is a, an important point. As I hope I gave in my intervention in Anisawa's opening speech, 
Mosque was, but right from the start, uh, that what is important here is that the independent inquiry is just that, independent. But, mo but most important in, in all of this is that it has the confidence of the families and that they should be involved right from the start in the terms of reference and that the chair who will have a very challenging job to take this important work forward has the right skill set but also can inspire the confidence of the families. All of those things are very, very important. And, and let me reassure members, I had another further discussion with the, the chair of NHS Tayside, uh, John Brown, last night, and he absolutely understands the importance of every single one of those issues. And he will be putting a lot of thought uh, into the process. Families may wish to be involved in different ways, but they should all have the opportunity uh, to, to be involved and should have the opportunity uh, to, to be heard. Yes, of course. Anna Sarwar. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking that intervention. Can she confirm in appointing that chair that it won't be someone that is an employee of NHS Tayside and indeed it won't be an employee of NHS Scotland in terms of the organisation um, and it will be a truly independent chair of both the Health Board but also the Scottish Government. Shona Robson. That, that is important and the Chair and I have already discussed the importance of that, um, that they have to have not just the right skill set but need to be uh, independent beyond the Health Service and the Scottish Government but importantly they have to uh, be able to um, inspire confidence in the families and indeed uh, in the public at large that uh, this will be um, an inquiry that will make changes and will make positive changes. And I think uh, I want to, to come back to that uh, in a second. Miles Briggs, I think, made an important point because in all of this, we have to recognise the efforts of the staff involved and that actually for many, many people, they have had good treatment in NHS Tayside from mental health services. And I think it is important to put that on the record. Where I would also agree with uh, Miles Briggs is his comment about personal attacks on uh, particular uh, Gillian Murray. Um, I agree with Miles Briggs. Families need to be able to speak out without criticism, whether that's on social media or anywhere else. And I certainly made my views very clear about that. Um, I also think Alison Johnson had a, an important uh, point to make about um, recruitment and retention and the high turnover of, of locum psychiatrists. This will be a difficult time uh, for Tayside, particularly in trying to attract new staff to mental health services uh, within the region. And I hope and would have an, uh, an aspiration that actually the independent inquiry in itself should be seen as a force for good in order to help bring uh, new staff to NHS Tayside. And we need to see it as a, a positive thing that will help. Uh, yes, of course. Well, you have to be very quick. Cabinet Secretary for taking this intervention. It's already been raised about the Mulberry unit. Will the Scottish Government look with NHS Tayside whether or not it would be appropriate to reopen that unit for patients in Angus? Shona Robson, uh, quickly, I don't please. think it would be appropriate to begin here this afternoon to start to establish the remit of what this independent inquiry. We've all agreed that actually that at the heart of that has to be the independent chair in consultation with others and uh, with the families. And I don't think uh, we should try to establish the remit here uh, today in this chamber. What I will say, though, is that I think uh, and I hope out of this, this debate, the most important thing is that the families leave here today and those families that are not here that are uh, back home, that they leave with a, a confidence that we are all uh, agreed that we must use this independent inquiry to first of all seek answers to the very pertinent and serious questions that many families have, but importantly, that the changes that come out of this inquiry will make NHS Tayside's mental health services some of the best, not just in Scotland, but beyond uh, these shores. And I, if that is what comes out of this independent inquiry, then I think the collective efforts of everyone in this chamber will have been worthwhile.
I call Mary Fee to wind up this debate for around five minutes, please, Ms Fee. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And in, in closing um, th this debate today, can I um, begin by thanking the families and the campaigners that have been at the heart of this debate. Their dedication to tackle and highlight the problems within NHS Tayside will help save lives. Can I also thank speakers from across the chamber for their very thoughtful and considered contributions in what I think has been a very powerful debate. The government amendment today is an indication that they have listened to the campaigners. The stigma of mental health, the lack of support and lack of understanding for those suffering poor mental health still, unfortunately, pervades our society. We cannot allow that to go on. We must change that. And many of the points that I will raise in my closing remarks have been raised already, but they are worthy of repeating. A number of colleagues have <coughs> praised the Lost Souls Group in Dundee. My colleague Lewis MacDonald said that patients and families don't just want to hear the answers, they want and need to be part of framing the questions after he was con contacted by a constituent. Jenny Mara spoke of the crisis in mental health and drug-related deaths in Dundee. And along with Richard Leonard and Anas Sarwar, I welcomed the review announced last week into the Carsview Centre. However, we knew then that that would not go far enough and a wider, fuller public inquiry into NHS Tayside was required. And I am glad to see in the government amendment a commitment for an inquiry. But that inquiry must be open, it must be accountable, and it must fully involve all of the families. Presiding officer, public services are at the core of what government provides. And these services should always be accessible when required and transparent and accountable when things go wrong. It shouldn't take a question posed to the First Minister for the government and NHS Tayside to sit up and listen. The families, like those in the gallery today, have been demanding answers for far too long. The death of David Ramsey is tragic, and not only because of the missed opportunities to prevent it. His niece and father shouldn't have to travel to Parliament to be listened to. Whilst the focus for today's debate is on NHS Tayside, there are problems across Scotland with mental health services, particularly for children and young people. And we know that waiting times are on the increase for an initial appointment for child and adolescent mental health services. And more than a quarter of children are not being seen within the 18 week waiting time target. Recent statistics show that 10 out of 14 health boards are not meeting CAMS targets. And I hope that the Audit Scotland review into CAMS, due to be published in the autumn of this year, will show that improvements are being made. If not, action must be taken and must be taken immediately to support our young people. The tragic loss of Lee Walsh has brought about a campaign for better mental health services in, in Tayside. Lee died of suicide last year and the website Not In Vain For Lee tells us that Lee suffered mental health problems on and off for over nine years, being prescribed various alternative medications but never actually receiving a particular diagnosis. And, presiding officer, can I close by focus, focusing on the government amendment, which commits to a full inquiry, and the comments made by my colleague Anas Sarwar in his opening remarks, that an independent inquiry must have an independent chair. It must include the families in agreeing the terms of reference, and it must ensure that families are part of that process. It must be open, transparent and inclusive and by taking these steps we will it will be a starting point in rebuilding the trust and confidence in, in mental health services however presiding officer my final thanks and admiration must go to the families 
Parliament has listened to you, and I am confident we stand united in a desire to achieve justice for you all. Thank you. That concludes the debate on the NHS Tayside Public Inquiry.